So, coming in at third, submitted by Mad Dog Fozzy Bear, we've got Born and Sacrifice. And this is actually an interesting and unique take on the rebirth theme. Everything in here is aimed and designed to represent the troops being rebirthed or sacrificing essentially to a to build up to something greater. You know, you've got Bordial Squad, uh, which has a backlash effect. You've got several troops like Righteous Zealot, uh, Cygnus Disciple, which bolsters other bodies, this cult uh, theme. These are all tying into the Word Bearers cards or, or Demon Host cards. Kurtha said, who is you know sacrificing his his acolytes to make himself a uh, higher power, and then when he dies, then he becomes a greater demon. So there's really interesting little tiny rebirths. Of course, you've got Sorbak Paul, you've got Gorlum Squad. This is all fueled by their fanatical zeal uh, from the corrupted. Arcology, and then ultimately at the end, you can close out with the Barge of the Damned. That's what they get on, uh, and they all come back for a rebirth uh, to be sacrificed all over again. Destiny's Hand can transform everything here into warp spawns if they're not careful. So, I really like this 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 different approach here to rebirth, taking a mechanic, but also applying it thematically to the Legion here. Everything is cultists. Uh, everything is chaos. Everything is beautiful. Moving into a little bit more harsher uh, deck list. This is submitted by Renegade13. Coming in at second place is Build Me a Throne. Uh, the infamous last lines in the book Betrayal featuring Angron's transformation. The entire book was focused around uh, Lorgar luring and sacrificing ultimately his brother to become the Red Angel correct everything in here ties into that theme mass mass apotheosis is what it leads up to at the 10 spot but you've got uh, his throne of skulls which ultimately that's most iconic with, with corn he leaves no survivors um, as he and he and his troops with the along with the butcher's nails uh, fresh from the embers of his fawn three emerge from their warp assault upon the the various worlds of uh, the Ultramar system and wage war and of course he's got in hand his gore child building a monument to corn rain fire down upon Gilliman's worlds um, he's got the armor of Mars which he wears proudly swinging both gore father and uh, <laughs> and gore child in hand and then of course as i said um, there's just a mass offering of death and skulls and destruction and before angron knows it he's given up uh his last vestiges of humanity as he falls headfirst into the dark embrace of corn when you talk about demonic um when you talk about the 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 Demon princes becoming from from the Primarchs. So I think Angron's transformation is one of the more most classic images, and this deck just really screams it out to me. And I like the title. I like how it all ties in thematically. So very nice job. And ultimately, talking rebirth. No rebirth could be mentioned without Vulcan. I think there was just no way I can get around it. This here is Rebirth at Mount Deathfire, uh, which is just the iconic story tying in all the elements of Vulcan's return, uh, resurrection to his legion following uh, the tragedy of Istvan V. All the cards that are in here kind of tie into that survivor uh, concept, manifest destiny, but also the story of his rebirth. And he had a close call. Uh, from the from, from the tragedies of Isvan, but also that Atham that was embedded into his heart that was responsible for delaying his resurrection. You've got the troops in here such as Igen Gargo, Berg Zytos, and Atok Abademi, who are actually there at Mount Deathfire and they when they discovered that he had returned back to the Legion. Along with it in hand, he had both of his hammers, Dawnbringer and Udrakul, uh, and he was prepared to in, to to return. He was armored. Uh, he had escaped fate's death. Ultimately, uh, thanks to the summoning ritual, as it were, the sacrifice of Numian, who gave up his life to return his 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 lord back to his legion, as well as hope from 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 the the tragedy. And thus, he was not torn born. And I think you kind of get how that all ties together. You've got the volcanic instability with Mount Deathfire. I don't think that goes without saying. 
just all the little nuances here. I had a lot of Vulcan decks submitted, a lot of Salamander's decks in general, which ties wonderfully with the theme. And I think this one was just the, the one that just edged out others with a little couple of smart, uh, smart thematic choices. So very good deck and congratulations.